ChatGPT has released a ton of new updates just in the last couple of months, and some of them have been big updates that I've already covered on this channel, like ChatGPT agents, but a lot of really useful updates went under the radar. So in this one video, I wanna show you a handful of new updates that will really change how you use ChatGPT. Okay, the first one I wanted to show you is under tools. And if you select deep research, you could actually combine deep research with other tools, which makes it a whole lot more useful. I specifically wanna show you how to connect it to what are called connectors inside of ChatGPT. So deep research, if you haven't used it before, one of the best ways that you could use ChatGPT. It will go through a hundred different websites based on your prompt and put together a detailed report. But here's the key part. If you drop down under the sources tab, you could connect these connectors. Now what this does, it uses the web inside of deep research mode, so it will still go and look on all kinds of different websites. But in addition to that, it will look into your own documents too. So they have released connectors for Box. I've used Box for many years. This is kind of like Dropbox for more enterprise users. So you'll have documents inside of Box or Dropbox, I have both. Inside of your Gmail account, for example, inside of your code repository, inside of GitHub, even Canva. So let me show you this more connector tab. These are all the different connectors and you could also connect it up here to Google Drive. So let me connect it here to my Dropbox as an example. And if you're more advanced under the create option, you could even do more than what's just shown over here. This is really more intended for developers here to connect it with other things beyond these simple apps that are included. Okay, so the Dropbox connector, really easy to use. Just click connect. Continue to Dropbox. Okay, Dropbox has been connected here and you could also add this deep research to your Google Drive in addition to just using the regular Google Drive connector. And again, anything else could be used in combination. So if you have things in HubSpot, for example, you could connect it with these other ones too. And if you exit that page, if you click on profile icon, go to settings, the connector tab is right here. So you could reconnect to any of these at any time. And now with deep research selected here as one of the tools, I could then use a source and then turn on Dropbox, for example. Okay, so now this is going to do deep research and look inside of my Dropbox for any relevant file. This is a huge time saver for me because between Google Drive, Dropbox, Box, Gmail, even my calendar, HubSpot, all that has different parts of things related to my business, notes that I've taken. Ever since I started using ChatGPT, by the way, I save a ton of more notes because now I could analyze notes a lot faster. I'll save like three months worth of a Slack conversation with someone and then it could analyze that and tell me how to respond. Now, if I ask it, tell me everything you know about what ChatGPT can do. Well. I've covered that in so many different scripts that are sitting inside of my Dropbox. Okay, let me show you what it's doing right now. It's through eight sources, but if you look on the right side, first it's going through my own sources inside of Dropbox. So it pulled in all the relevant information that it could find, and then it started going through other websites. OpenAI's website is coming back to Dropbox. It's going to here, canva.com, AI business, Zapier. So this is gonna be a lot more useful. It's using the power of deep research and deep researching your own documents plus the internet. So I'll let this finish up here. It's only been a couple of minutes so far. Okay, it's finally done and it went through 20 different sources. So you could always see the different sources on this tab. And again, as you could see, it went between different websites and my own Dropbox. And if I wanna see a specific source from my Dropbox, I could click it and it will take me directly to that page on my Dropbox. So this came from a very specific PDF. This was a PDF from HubSpot that I covered in a different video and it took me directly to that page. Now, if you use the app on the computer, you also have this option right here that connects to other apps. So on my Mac, for example, I take a lot of notes just on my notes app that comes with my Mac. So I could add that here and then I could then do deep research with notes. That's a great way to connect things that you already use. You could do this with different code uh, apps too, like Cursor and VS Code and things like that, Windsurf. So if you use deep research, connect it with your internal knowledge bases using the existing apps that you already have access to. Now, the second one I wanna show you is something that went under the radar, but is extremely useful. So 
Custom GPTs have been around for a long time, since 2023. So on this page, when you create a GPT or even when you use a GPT, this entire time you were limited to the default chat GPT model that ran that GPT. But now when you go to the configure tab, you still create GPTs the same way. So my video from 2023 is still relevant on how you create these custom GPTs. But right here, recommended models, recommended model for users, which should be used by default for the best results. If you click this, you have all these different models you could choose when you create these GPTs. So for example, by default, you always pretty much got defaulted to GPT-40 for a while before that was GPT-4. But let's say you want to use a reasoning model like O3 or O3 Pro or O4 Mini. You could go ahead and do that. And then let me go to an actual GPT here. Let's say someone clicks on my GPT and starts a chat with my GPT. Well, they could change the model right on top. If they click this, this one I set 4.0 as the default, but if they want to change it, they could change it. So when you create GPTs, you could set one of these models to be the default. And then when you use a GPT, you could use different models here as the end user. Now, what's really great about that is it allows you to create GPTs that take advantage of the reasoning models that are usually better for things like math and coding and logic and more sophisticated type of tasks. So that opens up the whole world of GPTs. Now, GPTs kind of went under the radar for a while now. They were the biggest thing in 2023. Now, with things like Notebook LM and ChatGPT projects, people are using those more and more. But I still love GPTs. As you see on the left side, I have GPTs for all kinds of different things. I have improved them over time with better system instructions. But check out my custom GPT video if you want to learn how to make your own. And now you could pick a model that is more relevant. Now, before I show you the next one, let me show you a brand new way to make AI agents with Lindy. Now, for the very first time, you could create custom AI agents with just a single prompt. Now, these will work on your computer like a human would, and you could share these with your team too to empower everyone with AI agents. And you don't have to really mess around with flow charts. You definitely don't need to worry about code. You just write a simple text prompt and it builds the agent that could actually do stuff on your computer. So for example, let's say you want a weekly update on competitor pricing. You could just ask the agent to do that. Let's say you need to automate your onboarding, email scheduling, account setup. It's all done with AI agents. If you want an agent to flag urgent support minutes, this just takes a minute with an AI agent. And what's really useful is you could actually share these AI agents with your team so everybody could use them. Now you could head over to Lindy AI and create a free account. And right now, use my link in the description, get 400 free credits to get started with, and there's plenty to explore. So try Lindy, it will save you hours a week and it'll help grow your business. Okay, the next chat GPT update I wanted to show you is under the projects tab here, where you could actually add chats to a project in a really simple way. So I'm going to start a test project here to show you how it works. Inside of any project, if you're not familiar with ChatGPT projects, you can actually add all kinds of different things. Again, things from Google Drive. You could upload documents here and you still have access to all these tools inside of projects. But what makes projects unique is with projects, you could add files specifically for this task. So they kind of work like custom GPTs. And what makes them really useful is right here. You could give these projects a instruction. This instruction will drive how this specific project works. So this is very, very useful. But here's something a lot of people don't know. Okay, so let's say I start a chat like this. What's new in Google Gemini? You could also combine this with the deep research with your own tool, so any of my previous chats. And then all you have to do is press these three dots right on top, and you'll see Add to Project, and I could just move this to that project like this. So now if you go to that project, you'll see sources will appear over here. So I don't have to go inside of a project every time, press the plus sign, figure out where I saved it. As I'm regularly using ChatGPT and I come across a useful chat, I literally just have to press the three dots and add it over here. And then anytime I could click those and it will bring me back to where I was. Now it's a simple upgrade, but it's actually really, really handy. You don't have to go back and forth a bunch. Simple click, add to project, and you'll always be able to quickly delete it from the project or archive it if you no longer need it, or just simply remove it from that project. Okay, the next one I wanted to show you is with the image option here inside of ChatGPT. 
And these styles are a really easy way to get all kinds of different looks from the same exact prompt. So here I started with a prompt, a majestic tiger walking through a misty forest at sunrise, rays of light filtering through the trees. Okay, that's pretty good. But now if I click it, I don't have to start a new chat. I could actually use the style tab and any type of refinement I could make here. I could also add as a text prompt, like adding or removing or replacing. But here I could select a different type of a style like cyberpunk. It will just add this prompt right here and starts with restyle this image with cyberpunk. And it will add this to the prompt automatically. And then I could send this out. So I'm going to show you all the different styles that are available here with the exact same image. So here's the cyberpunk option right here. This one's the anime option. This one is the dramatic headshot option. This is the coloring book option. This is the photo shoot option. This is the retro cartoon option, 80s glamour, art nouveau, and the last one is synth wave. And again, to use them, you just click the styles after you generate one image, you'll select it, and it will go ahead and put that prompt here, and you just send that out inside of ChatGPT. Okay, so for the next one, you actually download the ChatGPT app on your computer, and it's this option called record mode. So let me click it over here and this will get access to your system audio. So I'm gonna allow that here. I'm using it on a Mac here. And you could see right here, you will record what's happening. Now, why would you wanna do that? Well, this is fantastic for any type of meeting. Let's say I'm having a Zoom meeting or Google Meet meeting. I no longer need to invite an AI companion into these meetings. I just open up ChatGPT, I let this run here and let me stop it right now. Okay, I could resume it at any time and then I could send it. And then that creates this transcription right inside a chat. So you could directly chat with it right now to get any insights. I mean, that was a 20 second recording, but after an hour recording, there's gonna be a lot of notes here and you simply just ask any type of a follow-up question from it directly inside of ChatGPT. This was a complicated workflow usually between multiple different apps and it's giving me some recommendations for a follow-up. And that's the record mode available on the desktop app inside of ChatGPT. Okay, this next one a lot of people don't know about, but let me go to tools and let me turn on canvas mode. Now with canvas selected, I'm gonna go ahead and add a file. Again, you could pull things in from your Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive. In this case, I'll upload a file. Okay, I just have this sample doc over here and this looks pretty boring, right? Good old spreadsheet. Okay, I'm just gonna say, turn this into an interactive visual dashboard. Canvas is on, I'm gonna send this out. Okay, after a couple of revision, it wrote all the code, so I could press preview right on top. And we got ourselves a nice visual dashboard over here. And you can actually share this. You could go ahead and create a link and share this as a public link with someone or privately in your workspace if you have the Teams plan. And this is what it's gonna look like if someone else opens it and they could edit this with their ChatGPT account too. Now this is okay for simple spreadsheets. If you have more complicated spreadsheets, actually Claude does a much better job. So I'll show you that too, if you do wanna use this. This is the exact same prompt with the exact same doc. So let me open this up here. So you could see this one added filters, a really nice way to see it. You could have the all regions filter by supplies. And if I scroll down, these are interactive as well. You could hover over these. Okay, this looks a whole lot better than what ChatGPT put together. So if you do wanna use this type of thing, this is the Claude Artifacts that does it. The canvas inside of ChatGPT technically is capable of doing it, but in my personal experience for this specific use case of turning spreadsheets into something visual like this, this one, Claude, is gonna do a better job. And you could press publish here and publish and then copy and share the link with anyone. And I also wanted to show you one of our learning path inside of our platform Skill Leap. So we have an education platform and we started creating these learning paths to show you things in a very linear way, something I can't really do on YouTube. So this one is a five course learning path and it shows you things in the order I think you should learn them. So by the time you're done with this, you have a really good fundamental understanding of what all the AI tools do. And I keep that updated. We have seven instructors right now. So you learn all kinds of things related to AI. And every time a new tool comes out, new platform comes out, we release new courses and you get access to those as well. And if you wanna see a whole lot more ChatGPT use cases, I did cover all of them in this one video.